Typically this is a field effect transistor in a TO220 package, quite a useful package. We can attach a heat sink to this to draw away some of the heat from the device when it's conducting 10 amps or thereabouts. can put quite a, quite a lot of heat through this device. Yeah, I've drawn out the uh, circuit diagram. Obviously this is the H-bridge itself which we looked at in some detail earlier on. This is your positive rail or your motor power supply. It doesn't necessarily get connected to the LEGO NXT brick. In fact, it should preferably be kept isolated. So you have one battery or power source powering your chunky motors and another power, su power supply supplying the logic circuits or the robotics brain. That way you won't have to worry about transients destroying your electronics. Incidentally, you've got to build these circuits and try out all these things at your own risk. Uh, we're not going to replace your equipment if you get your connections wrong or if there's a fault in our circuit diagrams, although I'm sure you can see from the thoroughness with which we're doing all of this that what we're doing is pretty good. Okay. If we look at our devices, we've got Q1 over here. And we've got Q2 over there. We've got Q3 over here. And we've got Q4 over here. And these correspond to your switching positions in your dual H bridge. So if you want the motor to spin that way, your electrons have to flow that way. If you want your motor to spin that way, your electrons would be flowing that way. Corresponding to the simplified H-bridge diagrams we had earlier. Now in an FET, typically similar to a transistor, but not entirely the same. You have a gate and a source and a drain. The drain typically drains to the motor. Notice that your gates correspond to the positions of our matrix of diodes or our optocouplers. So effectively these big red dots correspond to our switching system which is that matrix of optocouplers that we initially tested out putting LEDs in those positions and remember